Hi and welcome to this video lesson on the cage system. In this video I'm going to show you what the cage system is, how it works and what you can achieve by studying it. To follow this lesson and understand it you need to know five common chords. The C chord, the A chord, the G chord, the E chord and the D chord. The cage system was originally born in the classical guitar world and was adopted by modern player as a way of organizing the guitar fretboard. Through the cage system we divide the neck in five areas and we build on each one a vocabulary of chords, scales, arpeggios and licks. The first result of knowing the cage system well is that you will be able to fluently play anywhere in the neck in any key. Of course, this will require some work and some constant practice. So, as I mentioned earlier, to follow this lesson you need to know these five common chord positions. C, A, G, E and D. These five chords form the word caged and that's why it's called the cage system, because it's based on these five positions. These five chords are very important because they're all movable, which means that we can move them anywhere in the fretboard. Let me give you an example. Let's play an E chord. Just to check that we're doing the same thing, I'm playing the bottom E open, A string on the second fret, D string on the second fret, G string on the first fret, open B string and open top E. Now keep this shape in mind including the open strings involved because if I want to move it I have to move all strings involved. So how are we going to do this? Well very simple. Let's start by changing the fingerings. So instead of using first, second and third fingers as we normally do we'll now use the 2nd, 3rd and 4th fingers. These fingerings allow us to move the position and take care of the open strings as well. That's why I had to put the index back. Can you recognize the E chord here? This is an F chord using the E shape. So to understand what chord we are playing, just look at the bottom E string. That's where the root of this position is. The root is the note that gives the chord the name and the root of the E shape is on the 6th string. So if you move this shape one more fret up you will be in F sharp or G flat. One more fret up it's gonna be G and then G sharp or A flat and so on. It's quite simple right? Now let's try with another common shape the A chord. This is the A chord. Let's check if we are doing it in the same way. I'm not playing the bottom E string, not because it's wrong, but because we want the root to be the lowest note in each position, so they are easier to find. So no six strings, we start from the fifth string, from the A string open, then D on the second fret, G string on the second fret, B string on the second fret, and top E open. As before, let's fret the chord with different fingers. So instead of using the first, second and third, or whatever you're using now, let's use the second, third and fourth fingers. Then move it up one fret and add the index. We're now playing the B flat chord using the A shape. The root of the A shape is on the fifth string. So if you move it one more fret up, you will be playing a B chord then a C chord, and so on. We've just looked at the two most common shapes. Now let's have a look at the three other ones. Let's play a standard C chord. Again, let's double check which strings we're using. I'm not playing the bottom E again. 
I want these notes to be the lowest note of the position because that's the root. So I'm starting from this note, which is the third fret on the A string, then second on the D string, open G, first on the B, and open top E string. Again, we have to change the fingerings and use the second finger, the third, and the fourth. Now move it one more fret up and add the index. We are now playing a C sharp or D flat chord. The name depends on the key, so now you can call it either C sharp or D flat. The root of this position is on the fifth string. So if you move it one more fret up, you will be in D, then E flat, then E, and so on. Let's play a D chord. Let's double check which strings we are playing. I'm not playing the bottom two strings. I'm starting from the open D string, then second on the G, third on the B, second on the top E string. As before, we need to change the fingerings. So second, third and fourth fingers. And now move it up one fret and add the index. We're now playing an E flat chord using the D shape. The root of the D shape is on the 4th string, is the only position that has the root on the 4th string. So if you move it one more fret up, it will be an E chord, F chord, F sharp and so on. Let's play this type of G chord. As you probably know, there are many types of G chord, but this is the one we're after. So just to check if we are doing the same thing, 3rd fret on the bottom E string, 2nd on the A string, open D, open G, open B, then 3rd fret on the top E. Now let's change the fingerings as usual, and move it 1 fret up and add the index. It's quite difficult, but this is an A flat chord. The root of this shape is on the 6th string. So one up and you are in A. This is an A chord, B flat or A sharp, and so on. To make sure you've understood how the cage system works, let me give you a little exercise. Why don't you find the F chord using all five shapes? Now, if you want, you can pause the video now, try to work it out yourself, and then come back and watch the rest of the video. Okay, let's start with the E shape. I change the fingerings, I move it one up, and I'm in F. So the F chord using the E shape is going to be here on the first fret. Let's do the A chord now. I change the fingerings, move it up, and this is B flat, B, C, C sharp, D, E flat, E, F. F using the A shape is going to be here on the 8th fret. Let's do the C shape now. I change the fingerings and I start moving it up. C sharp, D, E flat, E, and F. So F using the C shape is going to be here on the 5th fret. Let's do the D shape. I change the fingerings and start moving it. E flat, E, F. So the F chord using the D shape is going to be here on the third fret. Let's do with the G chord now. I change the fingerings and I start moving it. A flat, A, B flat, B, C, C sharp. D, E flat, E, 
and the F it's going to be here on the 10th fret. So now you know any major chord in five positions. So once you understand how the cage system works, it's important to understand how to organize the position in order to make things a little bit easier. To do that, let's just review the five shapes of the F chord we've just found. The E shape was on the first fret. The A shape was on the eighth fret. The C shape was on the fifth. The D shape was on the third. And the G shape was up here on the tenth. Now, if we organize them in a slightly better order, this is what we get. The E shape, the D shape, the C shape, the A shape, and finally the G shape. You will see that each one of these positions share one or more notes with the next one. The order of positions will always follow the order of the letters in the word caged, which means that after a C shape there will always be an A shape, and after an A shape there will be a G shape, and so on. Some of these positions are quite difficult to play, so let me just give you a couple of suggestions. Let's pretend that you're struggling with the C shape. First of all, that's a very common situation because the C shape is not easy and it involves quite a little bit of stretching. So the first suggestion will be move it up in the neck. In this way you can learn the position without putting too much stress on your hands. Once you're more familiar with the position, then you can move it lower in the neck until you will be able to do it anywhere. Another common mistake is to press too hard with these new positions. Now, by doing that, you're not making it any easier. So just keep an eye on how hard you're pressing the strings down. It shouldn't be too hard. A very common reaction to the cage system is, I'm never going to use these chords. Well, first of all, let me just say that the cage system is not necessarily about chords, but is about creating a reference point. We divide the guitar neck in five areas, and in each one of these areas we have scales, arpeggios, licks, and chords. So it's not necessarily about chords, but it's about creating this reference point that will help you to map out the guitar neck in any key. The second thing is, Although the positions that I've showed you are correct, but most of the time people use fragments of these positions. For instance, the G shape. It's very difficult, but if you just isolate the four strings in the middle, it suddenly becomes more usable. People often associate numbers with each position of the cage system. For instance, the E shape is position 1, the D shape is position 2, and so on. The problem with the numberings is that it changes depending on which area you live in. For instance, the E shape is position 1 here in the UK, but it's position 4 in the US. So it can be pretty confusing if you're looking at the numbers. The easiest option is to call the name of the position E shape, A shape and C shape. In this way there won't be any confusion. The cage system is a big topic and it's very important if you're trying to understand how the guitar works. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. If you have any questions just come to my website and email me. Thanks for watching, take care and I'll see you soon.